Hi everyone, welcome to Glow with Grace. So I'm trying out a new way of using this camera today. Um, people have been saying that the videos with the kind of two black strips on either side look a bit kind of funny and I'm trying this way. Um, I hope it works a bit better. And I wanted to answer some more of your questions today. So here we go. One was, how did I feel when I was going into labor? with Araya. Um, all right, well, some of you probably know some of my um, labor story. Um, it's all in my book, A Gentle Start, if you wanna read it there. But here we go. What happened? Well, I didn't really know I was in labor <laughs> most of the time that I was. Um, in the morning of the day when she arrived. She arrived in the evening at 8.47 p.m. Um, the morning, something felt a little bit different. And there was like kind of spotting um, when I went to the toilet. Um, but I, for me, I thought we were like two weeks off before the baby would arrive. So I just didn't want to go there in my head that that's what was happening, that I was in labor. And I didn't even say anything to Mr. Monarch until late in the morning um, and I just at that point felt like saying something just so that somebody else would know that something seemed to be changing in case you know something happened um, so I said to him you know I don't really know what's going on but something feels different and then um, he was out playing basketball for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours <laughs> um, and I started to think like, I don't know, this feels kind of funny, I'm not sure, maybe, and I, I I was thinking, you know, if this baby is trying to come out right now, I just don't think this is the best timing, and I was trying to suggest um, if that was what was happening, that the baby maybe wait a bit, and then I thought, well, maybe this is what is happening, I don't know, um, let's jump on the colonic table and do a colonic in case it is, because we wanted to do a water birth, and I didn't want to have a bowel movement in the bath, which is really common that women have bowel movements when they're giving birth because of all the pressure. Um, so I did a colonic and I got off the table and immediately when I got off the table uh, and went to the toilet, um, the toilet paper was red. Blood. Oh, <laughs> okay, I guess something is happening. Um, <clears throat> and I ran to the front of the house to tell Mr. Monarch that something seemed to definitely be happening and he was happening to come in from basketball at that exact same moment. And he was completely exhausted and ready to collapse and had no idea that um, I was actually in labor. <laughs> and so we ran out to the bathroom. We have a huge um, two person bath and we started to get that ready. I think it was already full of water and we were just heating it up. Um, and we started to run around like, well, he did at least, run around like crazy collecting all of the things that I had made a list that um, I wanted to have there in the room for the birth. And pretty much at that point, I just started to flip over into my right brain. Um, those of you who have given birth or, or know about this process um, know about that part of it, <laughs> I'm sure that... You know, some people call it like labor land. You pretty much go into your right brain. This is my experience at least. And you're just there in your right brain. And, and kind of like logic and speaking and those kind of things don't really happen so easily anymore. Once you're at that point of like really active labor. Um, I... It was, you know, standing there in the bathroom, we were trying to prepare everything, and suddenly my water broke. Um, just, I was just like, you know, moving a towel across the room or something, and suddenly poof, the water broke. And I just, yeah, it was like I just tripped out into my right brain, and I was just gone. And I was just standing there staring at all of this water on the floor. I just couldn't believe it like, all this liquid that had come out of my body. And I was just staring and staring at it. And I was like shouting for Mr. Monarch to come and look at it. And that was like all I could focus on was just like 
look at all this stuff that just came out of my body. <laughs> and that was pretty much it. Um, and then we got into the bath. And, well, then, you know, we went into the whole labor process. And um, an hour and 17 minutes later, Araya was in our hands. She was there. So how did I feel going into labor? That was it, you know, like I didn't really know and then I realized and there was kind of like a big rush to bring everything into the bathroom but pretty much I was already gone into my right brain by that point and that was it, you know, just doing my best to um, be present to the moment, just focus, focus, focus on the job at hand and um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember feeling, you know, like scared or happy or excited or any kind of like extreme emotion. Um, it was just like, okay, let's do this. This baby seems to have decided it's coming out right now. Here we go. Yeah, I hope that helps <laughs> in some way. Um, another question. If we were to have another child, would we want Araya to be there at the birth if she wanted to? I'd love that if she wanted to be there and if it felt appropriate at the time and everything flowed in that direction, I think it would be beautiful for her. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any qualms about her being there. Um, personally, if we were to have another child, I'd prefer if she was at least three years old. Um, so, you know, I feel like she'd be at a kind of age where she could be present without um, requiring a huge amount of attention, maybe. And I think it would be an amazing experience for her to be there. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it depends very much on on the person, the situation, how everything's going. Wonderful to have maybe someone else around who an older child is very comfortable with so that if things aren't going in the most optimal way and it doesn't feel like it's probably the best thing to have the older child around that, you know, they have somewhere else and someone else to go with. Um, but I would love, I think it would be absolutely incredible experience to, you know, at that young of an age to be present at a birth, you know, at the moment at which a human appears here in its body. Um, I think it would be incredible. You know, little girls especially are usually so interested in babies and being a mama and all that kind of stuff. So I think it would be amazing. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of a random question. Why limes? Why do we use limes instead of lemons here? Um, some of you might have heard me mention that a couple of times. We don't, there's no, there's, there's no lemons here. There's limes. That's just how it is. I don't know why. Um, maybe someone here who's from South or Central America could explain that <laughs> to us. I don't know why they don't, they just don't use lemons. I'm sure they would probably grow here, but they seem to be into limes, not lemons. Um, you know, just like with Mexican food, there's usually limes involved, right? Not lemons. I don't know. Um, okay. This is a couple of big questions. One is what is my skin and hair routine? And also what, what are Araya's skin and hair routines? Um, okay, it's all pretty minimal is the short answer. Um, let's see. My skin, what do I do? We have these MSM soaps that we sell on our site. That's what we use as soap. Um, and then for shampoo and conditioner, I use this stuff from Soigne. Um, that we also sell that is just the most amazing shampoo and conditioner I've ever found or used. Um, if you've used it, you know what I'm talking about. It smells like chocolate. It's completely addictive. It's like really rich and nutrient dense. It has like MSM and all these things in it. And I've been using that for like five or six years, like pretty much exclusively. Um, it's You just can't <laughs> compare, you know? When you use that, it's like nothing else just does it anymore. So that's what I use on my hair. And I wash my hair at this point like once or twice a week. Um, which kind of was out of choice and kind of was part of being a new mama. <laughs> you know, there's not that much time to do things like wash your hair. 
Um, and my hair seems very happy for it, you know. Um, it seems to be doing good. Um, what else do I do? Oh, so this probably isn't something that other people would really want to do. <laughs> but um, I really, really, really love harsh face scrubs. I just always have. There's something about just like really grinding something into my face and taking the skin up that I really like. Um, and you know, definitely no one else is probably going to recommend that to you. And I probably wouldn't recommend it for anyone else because you know, it's not the best idea to be harshly scraping off the skin of your face. But for some reason, I just really love it. And um, a couple of the um, scrubs from Nadine from Living Libations. I, I have a couple of those, the ginger one and the peppermint one, and I really like both of them as a body scrub, but also, you know, it says on the label, like, use gently on the face, but I just don't. <laughs> I just use it really harsh, because I just love it for some reason. Um, so I love doing that, and, well, Nadine just has so many amazing products. I mean, she's she's just incredible. Um, so in terms of, like, what I put on my face after I scrub it like that, um... I will often put something from her. So I might put like her Rose Glow Cream, um, if it's the daytime especially. Um, but if it's nighttime, <coughs> or I feel to, I might put on an oil from her. Like the Cell Serum oil is just amazing. It just feels like every cell of your face is being given this incredible nutrient hit. Um, what else do I do? Sometimes I use bentonite clay on my face as well. I just I'm re I'm just into really harsh stuff <laughs> for some reason on my face. Um, I don't think there's anything else I do really. I I have like a kind of loofah thing that I scrub with in the shower. That's about it. Um, and dry skin brushing, of course, is great. Um, Araya, what does she do? So far, nothing. Basically, she we just use water. We do a bath with her every day, and we have done since she was like a few weeks old. And there's never been anything in it except water. Um, and that's it. That, that's all that she's ever used. And then um, I put oil on her skin if I put anything on it. And there's been different oils that we've used since um, her birth. Like at one point, I was using sesame oil. Um, sometimes. Um, just like there's one oil from Nadine as well from Living Libations called Jai Baby Joy which is really lovely, it smells really nice just different things like that, just different simple lovely oils and that's it for her, yeah I think that's it for our, for our skin and hair hope that helps last question, this is a kind of a big one as well, I'll try and do it fast because we're already kind of long here. Um, supplements, I know this is a huge question that people keep asking over and over again. What did I take for supplementation during pregnancy and now um, as a breastfeeding mother? So Araya's 14 months and we're still um, like full-term breastfeeding. It's still her main source of nutrition, I would say. It's probably like, mm, I would guess somewhere around 70% of her intake in a day is still breast milk. So, I'm consulting my book here. I have it open on my computer, Gentle Start, um, to see what it was that I was taking and still take. Because it's all laid out. Here we go. Oh, so I based my supplementation on Shazzy's book, our dear friend Shazzy, her book Evie's Kitchen, which I keep mentioning because it's just so amazing in terms of understanding nutrition for um, raw, vegan, whoever actually, babies and mums and children, all that kind of stuff. So I took a prenatal from the company Megafood called Baby and Me. That was the prenatal that I took. I think it's possible that I actually started taking that before Arai was even conceived, I think. And then I took it all through pregnancy and I still take it now um, while breastfeeding. Baby and Me by Megafood. Um, I took and still take Omega Zen 3 for DHA, which is a vegan Omega 3 supplement. Um, 
that comes in capsules or liquid form and I would take that every day and I still take it every day. I would use vitamin B12 patches um, which you just usually put right there behind your ear. Um, I just pretty much always have two of those on behind my ears. Um, sometimes I do B12 sprays as well. Vitamin K2 capsules. Um, I wouldn't I wasn't doing those every day and I, I don't do them every day now either but I would just do them sometimes when I felt like it you know and then vitamin D spray I would do sometimes as well but we live in Ecuador so I get sun like every day basically you know but of course that depends where you are these are the kind of like things that people get concerned about in terms of being raw being pregnant um, being vegan that, that kind of things Vitamin D, vitamin K2, the Amigas, um, they're the kind of main things that people are concerned about. So I was doing all those different things. And I was also doing lesser thin powder, and I still do every day, um, which is really great for choline for brain development. If you're not doing animal products, it's kind of hard to get choline. So we sell the Health Force Nutritionals non-GMO lesser thin powder, soy lesser thin powder, non-GMO and I would use like at least kind of a tablespoon of that often more per day and I still do um, in soups and stuff or you can just put it on salad put it anywhere it's like really easy to eat um, I was taking and still take really high quality um, cold pressed oils Andreas's oils I was using and still use um, which we also sell um, I was taking and still take um, either bone response or bone renewal two different products um, very similar kind of content they're things for obviously bone health and um, you know they have vitamin D and K2 and all that kind of stuff in them as well um, I was often drinking natural calm especially in the third trimester because um, I was having sleeping issues and it was just good to get you know the extra magnesium in my body and stuff um, I was taking angstrom minerals of zinc, calcium and iron and I still often do. Um, so that's just, you know, simple tasteless liquid I would take, you know, by the spoonful or whatever. And kelp capsules, which I've often taken in my life and still do. Um, just, you know, great mineral source, great for the thyroid. And I have always been eating, continue to eat lots of algae like chlorella spirulina, blue green algae, my marine phytoplankton um, for lots of protein and lots of chlorophyll. Um, so all of those things that I just mentioned, I don't necessarily do them every single day. Um, some of them I do more often than others. Um, I just kind of, you know, did things and do things when I remember them. When it feels right, the B12 I pretty much always have on, um, and the Omega 3 I take basically every day, and things with lots of minerals in them I take every day, like whether it's kelp capsules or um, we, there's this other thing that we take called Quintessential, which is a mineral supplement, um, and yeah, the <laughs> the others I just kind of took randomly here and there, um, and the lesser than every day. Yeah, I hope that helps. Um, I would really recommend checking out Shazzy's book if you haven't and, and you're really kind of concerned about getting this in a way that feels right for you. Um, Evie's Kitchen, check that out. The one other thing that I mentioned here in my book that I would like to say as well is there's this idea that it's not the best idea to take enzymes during pregnancy, especially systemic enzymes or metabolic enzymes as some come sometimes called as well. So prior to being pregnant, I would use um, systemic or metabolic enzymes basically every single day. Um, there's a concern though that um, because what those enzymes do is they dissolve things in your body, um, which could be anything, could be that they dissolve some tumour or they dissolve old waste or whatever. Um, that, that the enzymes could attack the growing fetus as a kind of foreign body and dissolve the fetus. That's the concern. Um, I hear some people vehemently saying don't use enzymes during pregnancy and some people say it doesn't matter. So I just um, 
was cautious about that and I didn't use enzymes during pregnancy. And I actually still haven't even got back to using them. Because I just forgot. <laughs> but I will try to get back to using them while I can. Um, and the other thing, of course, is probiotics. Always good to be taking in really good um, probiotics. Make sure your own um, gut flora is in really good health before you bring another person here. Um, and that could be by taking probiotics, eating fermented foods, drinking fermented drinks, all that kind of stuff which I do on a daily basis, pretty much. So I don't really even think about that. Okay, I hope that helped. That was a lot of stuff. Um, thank you for your questions. If you have more questions, you can leave them below in the comments. And blessings to everyone. Ciao.